it is time to take longer strides. Time for a great new American enterprise. Time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. We didn't know how to go to the moon. Nobody had been to the moon. And to send a man to the moon and land on the moon within a decade was a, a real challenge. And those involved at the time looked at each other and often thought, how can we do this? Many of the things that had to be invented to go to the moon hadn't been invented. Well, the uh, Apollo mission was designed to take two spacecraft to the moon, one of which would land and then return to the second spacecraft orbiting the moon, and that the command and service module would bring the three of us home. Uh, so in order to carry all of that, the giant Saturn V booster was constructed. And it's about 36 stories high, weighs six million pounds, has a thrust of seven and a half million pounds, which is beyond comprehension. But it's an enormous vehicle, and we're very fortunate that they all worked. Well, Apollo 15 was the first of the J missions, the so-called extended scientific exploration of the moon. And we had the capability to live on the moon for three days. Previous missions could stay for about a day and a half or so. Uh, you're very comfortable in that environment. Uh, so you proceed with your main task, which was the geology, albeit you had to pay attention to all the systems and the suits and the backpacks at the same time. But the purpose was to explore the moon. And uh, Jim Rowan and I had a great time doing that. Well, part of the exploration of the Hadley Apennine, where Apollo 15 landed, was to see if we could find uh, some of the original lunar crust, which was called anorthosite, and had a mineral in it called plagioclase. And the uniqueness of the anorthosite was, in the sun, it will sparkle. So the objective of the mission was to see if we could find a piece of anorthosite which would help the scientists determine the origin of the moon. And we found it during our second EVA on a three, and we collected a piece of anorthosite, which is uh, about 4.2 billion years old. And previous missions did not have uh, the extended capability of our lunar module, so we decided that when we got to the moon, we had to get sleep. So each evening, we would close the shades, turn on the lights, set up the hammocks, have dinner, set an alarm clock, and go to sleep. So we tried to tune our lives to the way we lived on the Earth, and it worked quite well. And our geology experience gave us an appreciation of the scientific value of the site, but also what it looked like. And it was even better than we had expected. It's just a beautiful place. The lunar module built in two pieces, such that the descent stage became the platform for launching the ascent stage, which went back into lunar orbit, rendezvoused with the command and service module, and then the command and service module propelled us back to Earth. And on the way to Earth, we dropped the service module and re-entered with just the command module. So it was a stepping process, one step, another step, and each step you would drop a piece of the total system. So you started out with the Saturn V and all spacecraft, and you came back with a little command module with three guys in it. The film really expresses is our experience during the flight. What we see, what we hear, what we feel, and, it, and generally our experience. So the idea is to help the audience and the public understand what it's like to go to the moon, which is very difficult to explain in words, but in imagery and sounds and motion, I think the audience will get a good appreciation for what it's like to go to the moon.